The holidays are finally upon us. Christmas trees are starting to pop up, multicolored lights are being strung all over the place, and tons of gifts are being purchased for friends and family. But sometimes it's not so easy to actually pick out a gift for that special someone in your life, which is why we're here to help. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you the Nintendo Life Holiday Gift Guide for the year 2020. Now last year, Alex did a holiday gift guide of his own, but he focused more on systems, accessories, and games. And we're going to be doing a very similar thing. I'll be talking about some games and accessories, but we're also going to be highlighting a bunch of different artwork, music, books, toys, and accessories, and just some more unique items. I bet we'll even have something for that person who already has it all. Now, some of these items were provided to us by the companies that make them to feature in this video or to just talk about in reviews. But a lot of these items, I also just outright purchased because I like physical objects. I have a problem. We'll also have purchase links in the description down below for all of the items that you see in this video. Some of them may be affiliate links, so if you happen to purchase anything through using those links, we might get a little kickback from them, which always helps the site. We also can't guarantee the current stock levels of each item that we feature in this video. So with all of that out of the way, let's get on to some gifts. First up, we're going to be talking about some physical cartridge video games for the Nintendo Switch. Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a game that we can't stop talking about, whether it's good or bad news. And you've also probably seen plenty of copies of it on the shelf. And it comes with three classic Super Mario games, Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. Now I won't tread on this long, but the kicker is that this physical copy of the game will only be available on store shelves until around March of next year. Then it sounds like Nintendo is going to stop producing copies, but they're also doing that with the digital version. So if you have someone in your life that thinks that this would be a great addition to their collection or has never played these games or wants to go replay them again, if you'd like to get it for them as a gift, this would be the best time to do it because this same time next year, it's probably going to be extremely hard to find copies of this game. Kings of Hyrule Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda also got a physical release just a month or two ago. This is a rhythmic dungeon crawler featuring the cast of The Legend of Zelda, and it also features an excellent soundtrack. This physical version of the game also features all of the DLC on the cartridge. So if you have a big Zelda fan in your life, this could be a good one to pick up. We also got our hands on the physical collector's edition version of Stardew Valley. Now this game is available on the eShop for $15. So if you've never played Stardew Valley and you like Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons or just games like that, we highly recommend you go check it out. But if you're a fan of physical goods or you're just a huge fan of this series, this collector's edition is a beauty. And it comes with a ton of goodies like a full color instruction manual, this nice fancy collector's edition box, a sweet wooden pin, an adorable little cleaning cloth, and this absolutely wonderful wooden standee of a farm from Stardew Valley. Look at that. And then Fangamer has also produced a hardcover guidebook for Stardew Valley as well. And this thing is massive. It has so much information in it. There's recipes in here, different ways how to grow different crops, how to get different tools, how to become friends with different people. There's so, so many details sunken into this guide. And if you happen to purchase this with the collector's edition game, you actually save a little bit of money too. I'm not sure if you'd necessarily call this a console, but Nintendo's contribution to the next gen release week was the Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. Edition. Now this thing is a super cool, high quality, somewhat recreation of the original Game & Watch units. The big difference though is that this has a full color screen built into it and it actually plays the original Game & Watch ball with Mario as the playable character but then it also has the original versions of Super Mario Bros and Super Mario Bros 2 well the Japanese version the lost levels this thing isn't perfect for long gameplay sessions but it wasn't really designed to be either it was meant for pick up and play moments when you're out and about waiting somewhere and you don't have something else on you now of course lots of us have games on our phones and on our switches but the idea of just having a few games to play is still appealing in the modern age and this is a really nice collector's piece for any Nintendo fan. These are also only going to be available until around March of next year so if you can get your hands on one we highly recommend checking it out. Now this next one may be a little more tricky to find this holiday but Nintendo has actually done it again by bringing more magic into your living room with Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Essentially you control a remote control Mario or Luigi cart with your Nintendo Switch and there's actually a camera built in up here that you can actually see what's in front of you and you build a track in your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you want and then you play the game with this. Now this isn't really a replacement for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or just really any standard Mario game. It's more of a novelty. But if I were a kid and I had my hands on something like this, 
just having the creative freedom to customize your track and constantly build on it and tear it down and rebuild it again, very much like Legos. The possibilities are endless. Now up for some Switch accessories, the Genki Covert Dock has to be probably my favorite accessory that was released for the Switch last year. This is a compact, completely functioning Switch dock that fits in the palm of your hand, that is, with cables attached, is literally smaller than the actual Switch AC adapter. This basically has two wall outlet prongs on the back, and actually if you live in different regions, there are adapters that you can put on this to change that out. And you actually just plug this into a wall, and then it has a HDMI that goes to the TV, and then there's a USB-C here that goes to your Switch. There's also an extra USB port here that you can plug controllers into or extra accessories if you need as well. Now this does come with a USB-C 3.1 cable, but it doesn't have a HDMI cable. So if you plan on picking one of these up, you'll just want to keep that in mind. And then we have the Split Pad Pro, which are essentially Jumbo Joy-Con that pop just right onto your Switch and make it feel like you're playing with a Pro controller, but on the go. Now sadly, these are missing some features that standard Switch Joy-Con and Pro Controllers would have, like an accelerometer or NFC support. And they also only work when attached to the system. They don't have any wireless capabilities at all. But they really do feel like a joy to play with. And if I've illustrated it well enough by the way that I'm holding the, the system here, but you can see just really how much more grip I have on the controllers than, than I do on the actual Switch itself. And now Hori has produced quite a few of these as well. There's tons of different colors. So if you have someone in your family or one of your friends with big hands who's always complaining about the size of the Switch Joy-Cons, then this is perfect. But then if you have someone who is the opposite or is just a child, we have the Hori Pad Mini. Now this is a little tiny USB connected controller that works great on Switch. These controllers also come in a variety of different styles. We have some Pokemon ones and we even have a Super Mario Bros one too. Now the quality on these isn't perfect and the, the wire is a little bit of a bummer, but for $24.99, you can't really beat that. And now we have some media to talk about, some books and some music. First up, this is one of my favorite vinyl that I own. This features some wonderful orchestral remixes of music from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask by Theopany. The gold vinyl is excellent. It perfectly pairs with the actual original cartridge for Majora's Mask, at least here in the States. And the interior art is, oh my man. Even the cover has like a matte finish and then the eyes are actually glossy as well. The, pr the presentation on this is perfect and the music is something else. You seriously, even if you don't pick this up, you just have to go listen to this soundtrack if you haven't already. Next up, we have the Game Boy Box Art Collection. This features hundreds of pages, over like 300 pages of Game Boy Box Art. Now he didn't ask me to say anything about this. This book is just an absolute beaut. It'd be perfect for a coffee table or even just for anyone who's a fan of the Game Boy, fan of retro games, they'll be instantly nostalgic. And it doesn't cover just games from one region either. It covers Japan, Europe, America. There might even be some other regions in here as well. I'm not 100%. I haven't read through the whole thing yet because there's a lot of pages. And then another topic on the Game Boy is a book all about Game Boy modding. This was written by Greg Farrell, who runs Game Changer Mods. He has a page over on Instagram. I was at Barnes & Noble a few weeks ago and saw this on the shelf. And actually recently, I went through some troubles with modding my original, well, not my original, but modding an original Game Boy Advance. I changed out the shell, put in a new screen, and unfortunately, I messed up the board a little bit. And I wish that I would have had a book like this to kind of sit next to me while I'm working on something so that way I can quickly reference it because there are plenty of guides and walkthroughs and things online that you can find, but Greg really knows his stuff. So next time I plan on modding something, I'm definitely going to be using this instead. I've read through probably about half of it now, and the cool thing about it is nearly every page, every walkthrough has a close-up picture of whatever he's referring to. And then sometimes he's even drawn in little like comic book art in here as well of him like cleaning up the room or talking about being safe when you're using a box cutter. It's, it's all great stuff. And then the last book to talk about is Ukulele and the Crackle Stone. This is a comic book entirely kind of based and themed around the world of ukulele. Now this is an entirely original story, so you don't actually have to be a fan of ukulele in order to enjoy this book, but it does carry that same charm and magic from the Rareware series and Platonic series that we all know and love. The art is gorgeous. It seriously jumps up off the page at you, and it'd be perfect for anyone young and old. And now it's time to talk about some more things that you think of as a gift. 
gift, more unique items, accessories for actual humans, not video game accessories. Our good friends over at Artovision sent over this absolutely wonderful, fully custom Super Mario Bros. Shadow Box, which is actually pretty close to where I'm from, so obviously I have a little bit more love for them than maybe anybody else does. But look at this work! I met them a few years ago at a convention in Wisconsin and like absolutely freaked out when I saw their booth. They had so many cool pieces. This shadow box, for example, has three different panes of glass in here and there's also an additional layer on the back side that all feature artwork. It's cool to see how this actually comes to life in different lighting settings and the way that the shadows actually fall on the image. And like I said, this is a custom art piece by Ian Glawbinger. I, I'm, I'm hoping I pronounced that right. Now, Artivision does have this available on their website. It retails for $129, but they also have a a ton of other different video game shadow boxes as well. Some are custom art like this, and a lot of them are actually official artwork, licensed stuff. And if you feel like you don't have the exact budget for this or or even just the room, because this is a big piece, I have no idea where I'm gonna put this. They also make little desktop art as well, which I say little, but this really, this is bigger than my hands. This one uses actual sprites from Mega Man 2 and features the boss screen. Now, like I was saying before, this one is actually officially licensed by Capcom. And they have a number of other different officially licensed ones as well. Some from Cuphead, from Konami's different games like Castlevania and Contra, The Messenger, Golf Story. There's a number of different games that they have shadow box art for and these desktop art pieces. And these retail for $39, I believe. They also come with a cool little wooden stand as well that helps keep it safe and propped up if you want to put it on your desk or on your shelf or wherever. Artovision also made me aware that if you do decide you want to purchase any of their stuff for someone for the holidays, that their cutoff is December 8th to make sure that it actually gets shipped to you in time. And then the folks over at Fangamer sent over a ton of goodies, including some of these plushies. We have Jinjos from Banjo-Kazooie, Shantae in here, even Snake from Metal Gear. And the thing with Fangamer is each product is more than just a product. It's a labor of love. They put so much passion into these things. The Ori plush, for example, has magnets in his hands so you can hang him on a lamp or a shelf or on my microphone stand, which is probably where I'm going to hang him. The Solid Snake and Otacon plush set come with an actual cardboard box that they can chill in or hide in. Shantae has poseable hair because why not? Strong Bad actually talks and has new voice lines from the real strong bad and they made five different colored jinjos from banjo kazooie because you can't just make one but i would choose green i would always choose green and then you have these cute little plush hollow knight keychains that you can hang on a backpack or really anything you can hang a hook on and then this little plush pouch of the annoying dog from undertale actually has interior art on the fabric that's inside the pouch Fangamer also sent over some shirts like this crazy Trogdor one that's very reminiscent of my, my scene days in the uh, in the 2000s. We also have this cool Dark Souls one that's for all you edgy Dark Souls kids out there that only play with, you know, elite professional customizable controllers or Donkey Konga bongos. <laughs> and then we have this long sleeve Hollow Knight shirt, which was it was pigmented dyed, which is strange. I've never really heard of that. Like I was supposed to wash it and the dye was gonna come out and I did and it looks cool. Like it has like a vintage look and there's art on the sleeves too. I dig it. And I'm not sure if it's everyone, but most of their t-shirts also come with stickers as well. Look at this Trogdor one. It looks straight up like something that you would have found in like a vending machine back in the 90s. Fangamer also makes a ton of different pins. Now, some of these are a little more standard, but they're all very, very nice, very high quality. But now they're starting to do things with moving parts. So you have this one of Lancer from Deltarune where his wheels on his bike actually spin. So cool, right? The coolest. And then you have this one of Snake hiding underneath the box, but you can actually flip the box up. And then we have Revolver Ocelot where his gun actually revolves. Get it? So they called him Revolving Ocelot. It's ridiculous. And then they also sent over this Joja cup from Stardew Valley, which is perfect for drinking a beverage because it's a cup. It works. Now, hopefully something, something on this list has piqued your interest for either a friend or family member or maybe even yourself because it's always okay to buy yourself a present. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you found some ultra cool item that you think would have been a perfect addition to this list so that way other people can go check it out and possibly buy it for themselves or for their friends or family or so we can buy it for ourselves. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and give yourself the gift of subscribing to Nintendo Life by 
giving that subscribe button a click if you haven't already. And then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever John, Alex, or I, or Damien, or whoever, whoever runs this site, puts up a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, have a happy holidays, and we will see you next time. Oh.